Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to the worship service. We welcome our visitors this morning. There is a little blue card found directly in front of you there in the pew. If you would be willing to fill that out, place your email address on it, and place it in the offertory plate, we would appreciate that. We endeavor to send out an email on normally Fridays uh, to let one know what's happening here at First Presbyterian Church. We also welcome those of you participating from home. We are so pleased that you are with us today. Following the worship service, everyone is welcome to a time of fellowship and refreshment in the church parlor. Uh, We also want to welcome uh, a guest uh, choir member today, uh, Pastor Wes. Uh, He's on vacation, he just can't get enough church. Okay, that's the Lutherans. That's just those Lutherans, I guess. Yeah. So, very good, but welcome, welcome. Uh, another kind of a personal announcement here. Uh, I am always grateful and blessed by our church choir for helping lead the service every Sunday morning, as I'm sure as you are also. Uh, this morning, I'm especially reminded of John and the choir's commitment and great value in helping to lead us in our worship. Uh, Just this past week, uh, er, well, early this past week, I called John because of wanting to, uh, to the particular scripture I'm I'm using today, there's a piece of music that I really love, and I thought, well, maybe John could just, again, this was like Tuesday, I can't even remember for sure, but but I, I called John and I said, you could say no, you could say no, but I said, there's this piece of music, and could you just maybe even spend 30 seconds or something just playing the organ up with it, you know? And he said, oh, yeah, let me, let me look into this. So a day later, I get notice from him that the choir's actually going to sing it. And I thought, wow, wow. So I just want to throw out a very, very special thank you to you, uh, far beyond what I was expecting, and it was so kind of you. And you are going to, we're always treated, but this is another treat uh, for us this morning to hear this, uh, oh, uh, where's John now? Let's see, uh, 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 how do you say it? Abendi, close enough, in German. <laughs> I took one semester of German 50 years ago, okay? So anyhow, it is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 29, uh, at the very beginning of that verse, Stay with us. And that's where this 15-year-old composer, or he wrote it at 15. What was I doing when I was 15? Playing ball. So we have that. Now, Pam, announcements. Okay, I do need help. We will be delivering food for CEO on Saturday. We meet at the church at 845. If anyone would like to help, please let me know. This week at Gather, on Monday, it's not in your bulletin, but on tomorrow at 6.30, there is an, an, a presentation and, and awarding of certificates of achievement for women for the Women's International Women's Month, which was last month, yeah. <laughs> also, let's see, on Monday we have ESL class, on Tuesday we have a NAACP and the drum circle will be here, Wednesday is, is yoga, Thursday is Tai Chi and Zen, and um, I missed the drum circle. Drum circle's on Tuesday, okay. Okay, thank you. (laughs) Thank you, thank you very much. All right, please note the other announcements in the bulletin, and now please stand for the call to worship. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. We shall render to God justice and love for all peoples. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Our God of Easter, Lord of the assurance that you are with us and you are there throughout our lives, we enter into worship this morning and 
we are seeking your guidance as we search the scriptures, desire to learn more of your ways to live by. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's unite together in the prayer of confession. God of Easter and beyond, your children often find ourselves disillusioned and filled with emptiness. We live as though the cross and death of Good Friday are the end. There is no more. We walk away from hope. Forgive us, for we are frail and life is difficult. Forgive us for closing our eyes to all the possibilities that await us. Make yourself known to us as you commune with us. May our hearts burn within us. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
My friends, let us, let us pray. God of Easter, we have celebrated the resurrection of our Lord once again. We now continue our journey of living our Christian lives committed to your will and your ways. Renew within each of us your vision of living our lives committed to forgiveness, acceptance, love, respect, justice, and so much more. May Christ be reflected in our daily lives. May our hope and vision be found in you and in your wisdom. Guide us as mothers, fathers, grandparents, friends, neighbors, and citizens to live your values and commandments, to support and preserve our families and communities. We give you thanks for the wondrous guidance that we do receive through Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh that dwells among us. Our Lord, this morning we, we pray for those that are here in this sanctuary, those participating from home who are experiencing difficult times, loss, fear, anxiety. May your Holy Spirit of comfort, strength, and love guide each of them that are seeking a path forward in their lives. May your image shine within them, within us, and lighten our way. We continue to pray for the Ukrainian people as they experience the pain and devastations of war. We pray for the Ukrainian people and the Russian peoples that soon they will live together in peace and once again see themselves as friends and neighbors. We pray for the people of the nation of Israel. May our prayers and support never waver. As the near future unfolds, we pray for the Palestinian people, that they will pursue the government that they need and so deserve, to live peacefully with their Jewish neighbors and share in the prosperity offered. May peace soon be restored. And our, our God is a community of faith. We continue to pray for our loved ones and friends that are ill. And so we offer to you this morning Wayne Daniels, Louise Davidson, Eric Stein, Joe and Barb Kordick, Diana Morgan, Zachary Martz, Don Chalice, June Stevens, Helen Ralston, Debbie Gavin, Don Heilebrin, Michael Lapatka, Dick Mung, Jerry Conklin, Peggy Leflid, Scott Walters, Ron Kaiser, Amy Owen, and Kathy Kowalski. And now, Lord, we silently offer up to you our personal prayers for other friends, family, personal concerns. We continue to pray for our military, for those who are in harm's way. We pray for our president, the Congress, and all the leaders of the world, that they would be committed to true peace, to justice, to the protection of the innocent. Our God, again, as we have entered this new week, inspire us to be bold to speak and share your vision to those that we meet, those that we get a, have a sense that they could use a good word or a helping hand. May we live in and through Christ as we enter this week. Hear now the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Our gracious God, we pray now that you'll ex receive these gifts and offerings, that they may be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My friends, uh, probably shouldn't phrase it this way, but it's kind of my old, it's kind of way, when I go way back to the, my earlier days. Uh, to me, it would be a sin if we don't thank our choir. I mean, we, we love you every week, but the fact that you pulled that together so beautifully, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Last week, Easter Sunday, we considered John's gospel narrative of the resurrection of Christ. Recall Mary Magdalene, Peter, and the beloved disciple were there early at the tomb. This morning, due to my wanting to consider two particular disciples who set off that morning from Jerusalem to go home to Emmaus. They were dejected, depressed, dismayed. Oh, they just thought, what's the use? Their lives continued to be empty. Their hope was gone. Now, due to the fact that I wanted to share this particular story following Easter Sunday, I had to go to Luke's Gospel because that's the only place we find the Road to Emmaus story. So in Luke's Gospel, which you'll be hearing about here shortly, the tomb is empty, just like it is for all four of the Gospels. It has its own particularities. It has, for those of you last week, you remember, okay, though in Luke's Gospel, it has two men in dazzling apparel inside the tomb. If you recall last week, it was two messengers, two angels, okay? These men remind them of Jesus' teachings about what was going to happen. That was similar. But those present here in Luke's gospel, those present are basically a number of women that are named and unnamed. And so, my friend, friends, as we rehearse the gospel message of the empty tomb, we'll go a little further. Listen for the guidance of God. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went, they went to the tomb, taking the spices which they had prepared and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but the, when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. Now, catch this. They return to the apostles' disciples and relate their experience to them. Okay, we, I've, I've interrupted the narrative here, but keep it in mind, okay? And there, here, here is their response to these gathered disciples' apostles, okay? It's been explained to them what they've experienced, and they're coming, they've been, they're there. And here we go. But these words that were shared, seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. That very day, and here we go now into the text for today, that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, keeping in mind what their thought was, about seven miles from Jerusalem, talking with each other about all these things that have happened. While they were 
talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Hmm. And Jesus said to them, what is the conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? What are you talking about? They, you know, they were walking. And when I hear this, this fellow ask them as he's walking with them, uh, they, it's, a, it's a dead stop. They stop. They can't believe. It says here, and they stood still, keeping in mind they had been walking, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. And here we go. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. It goes on, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into, into his glory? And beginning with Moses, sorry, and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Back to the sources. So they drew near to the, the village of Emmaus, to which they were going, and he, Jesus, appeared to be walking on, going further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us. For evening shadows darken, and the day will soon be over. So he went in to stay with us them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them. Sound familiar? And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures? Amen. I'm going to take a risk this morning and declare. Here it is. It is a qualifier, but here it is. Almost all of humankind, none of us want to be alone, or almost want to be alone. I've said it. But really, I don't think I took much risk in saying that to you, that basically we don't want, we don't like to be alone. Actually, recent studies are declaring an increase in human loneliness, but that's for another sermon, but it will be coming. Now, there are times, I understand this, you know this, there are times that we do want to be alone, but that's not the context that I'm talking about. You would know that. Uh, I, I, I couldn't help but remember that, uh, uh, and she was even before my time, but, uh, well, somewhat, uh, Greta Garbo. Anybody know that name? Huh? Okay. She is supposedly to have said, you know, that famous phrase, uh, I want to be alone. Okay. But I read about that she really never said that, and she, she let it be known. She demurred saying, uh, she said, I only said, I want to be let alone. And she went on to say, there is all the difference. So there. In my life and in your life, 
We want presence in our lives. We have been created for the presence of human and the presence of the divine. Presence. When I was a six-year-old boy, in my home, I fell off our piano and broke my left arm. Don't ask. I spent several days in the hospital. That, that happened back at that time, several days, okay? The surgery for, required stitches and bone chips. In addition to the pain, I could still remember I was terrified of being alone in the hospital. Back at that time, I was extremely shy. No kidding. I frantically wanted my mother to stay with me. It was never a question for her, though. She told them she's staying. She did. They put a chair up there right next to my bed, and she spent 24-7 there doing her best to fall asleep at times, I'm sure, in that chair. Stay with me. Stay with us. We are not who we are to be without relationships, without God. So enter the ro road to Emmaus. Luke's gospel tells us there were two fellows walking away from what they thought would be the fire to change their lives. They had dared to hope against hope, but now they felt so foolish. How foolish to have believed that things could change. Their hearts had burned within as they walked and talked as they were moving about in Galilee, following this Jesus, this young rabbi that had so much wisdom, so much strength of power in his speaking and those, those events, the healings and all. You know, They just thought he's the one. That, but they weren't sure, you know, that they thought it could be. And as they went on, it got better and better in the sense of, okay, this could be the one. He was warming their hearts, stirring their souls. They were more and more thinking. They were feeling this presence. They seemed to sense more and more that, no, we are not alone. Then, two weeks ago, for us, but then they get to Jerusalem. You know, that Palm Sunday thing, the waving of the branches, celebration, receiving shouts. He's making his mark. They're even more sure. But within one week, one week, he's dead. A ghastly death. Oh, how we had hoped. The fire was just quenched. The tomb is cold. Those two fellows, they're getting these crazy idle stories. Let's just go home. Let's walk the several miles. Just go back to the way things were. After all, that's, we're used to that. So as they were trudging away from Jerusalem, they were recounting the recent events, just wondering what in the world happened. How did we get pulled into this? This belief. How alone, how alone we are. As they absorbed, as they were absorbed in conversation, it turns out the risen Christ appears to them. They don't recognize him. It's an interesting phrase there. But it's no surprise on one level. Why should they recognize him? The fire had gone out and he had, they'd seen him die on a cross. Nothing has changed. Let's go back to that. Nothing has changed. And Jesus, as he walks with them, you know, he says, hey, fellas, what were you talking about as I joined you? Hearing this crazy question, they again stop dead in their tracks. Now they are incredulous that this, this, this hayseed doesn't even know what has happened in Jerusalem. Apparently the whole town, the whole city is talking about it. Are you the only person in Jerusalem that hasn't heard this? Now, of course, we know Jesus knew, but he wants them to interpret it for him. He wants them to go back, go back to their history, go back to their lives, and re it. 
You see, they had interpreted these events incorrectly. And Jesus wants them to look again at the facts. Look again at the past events. Perhaps you've missed something. He doesn't say that, but that's what's going on here. Look at your history, recent and past, and take care to read it well. Do not jump to conclusions. Well, they tell the history. At one point they say, but we had hoped. My friends, how many times in your life have you used that phrase? I'm guessing more than once. You know what I'm talking about. There are times in our lives when the fire goes out. And what they are saying is a mantra that too many children of God repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. So here we go. They're going back. He's having them look to the scriptures as, you know, they have it pretty well memorized. Okay? Tell me again. Say it again. Over and over. This was to happen. This was to happen. Okay? Presuppose, my friends, in the Judeo-Christian tradition is that history possesses meaning. I know on one level that just seems so absurd to the world we live in today, to the culture that we live in. Okay, but that is the Christian conviction. History has meaning, a telos, it has purpose. We're a part of it. We are not alone. Today, we walk down the road sharing histories. Today, we are deluged by a multiplicity of interpretations of history and life. Often, we're like those two men on the road to Emmaus. We are often sad and feeling hopeless. For many, there is no compass. There is no fire within. If we ever hoped that life could be different and change, many of us in this culture have just given up long ago. This is not just a personal existential malaise, but it seems to myself and to many other, others, today it is also a cultural, civilizational disease. This ease. My friends, as the two were walking dejected, mournful, without hope, walking away from where their hope had been, they find out they were wrong again. We are not alone in the universe, even though our culture often says that or implies it. Could it be that the fire is never really completely out? It's smoldering deep down within us existentially as an individual and hopefully within our culture as we go across traversing our roads. As Christians, does not Christ walk with us? We, we say that, but how often does it seem to be real? Recall how Jesus was going to continue on the journey beautiful story here. I'm glad it made it into Luke's account. They were enthralled with this fellow that was telling them to rehearse their history. They, he, he appears to be going further and not, he's going to leave them. And they, started, and they say to him, no, please, stay with us. Stay with us for the evening shadows darken and the day will soon be over. That's what our choir so beautifully was singing, that mantra. Stay with us, for evening shadows darken, and the day will soon be over. And Jesus stopped. He stayed with them. He went in, and he supped with them. He had dinner with them. Stay with us. Remember what happened there. And then Jesus, we are told, took the bread while they were there, the three of them, took the bread, blessed, and broke it. And he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. Here was the Christ. And I love this. And that same hour, they, the two, went back to Jerusalem. They turned around. They changed direction once again. This time, they figured out that all of this history, all of these stories are better, best interpreted in hope and in life rather than it's just the same, it's always going to be the same, with death ending it all. But that is not the message of Christ. 
no matter what happens in our lives, that is not the message of Christ. In our confession, our faith, Lord, hear our cry, stay with us. In Christ's name, amen. those at home and here at church. Will the congregation please stand so that together we may read the traditional version of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 14 in the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Christ invites all those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. And so, member and visitor alike, each and every one of you that is gathered here this morning, those of you that are with us at home, Everyone, all of you, are welcome to this table. No one, no one is to be excluded. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it, and he gave it to them, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Please join with me in the litany. We lift up your, your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Hosanna in the highest.
the apostle proclaimed as recorded in 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord our God, gathered together here around you, we remember the old story which has been told down the ages of Jesus of Nazareth, a man who boldly dared say to you, Lord God, Abba, Father, and has taught us to do the same thing. We remember that wherever your Jesus came, people rediscovered their humanity and so were filled with new riches so that they could give one another new courage in their lives. So when we eat this bread together and drink of this cup, we do it in remembrance of him, your son, who is the servant and liberator of us all, now and ever and beyond death. same night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood, which is poured out for many. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me will never be hungry. Those who believe in me will never thirst.
Let us partake of the symbol of God's love for us. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let us partake of the symbol of God's love for us.
Let us pray. Our God of Easter, our God of renewed life, our God of love, we thank you for this opportunity to be together as a part of the body of Christ. We thank you for this sacrament. And we thank you. We thank you, our Lord, that you stay with us throughout our lives, that you give us guidance, you give us wisdom, knowledge in how to live our lives, and you give us grace that we may live following Christ. It is, it is, it is in his name we pray. Go in peace. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.